Now in this video, we'll be going through the topic of linear functions and graphs. Okay, I'll be using this particular example to go through what we call the effective graph plotting. Okay, now let me show you what is a common mistake that students will always make. Okay, the first thing that they will do when they see a question like that is they will draw a zero. Okay, so they will just draw one line and then they will just draw another line and then they will have a zero. Okay, however, based on the units or rather the the measurements that they are actually requiring for you okay you'll realize that you will actually meet a point where you're unable to plot the numbers that you actually want okay so for the first step that we will normally recommend you to do is to just draw your table and find your x and y values first so you see i have x y okay i have negative three negative two negative one zero 1, 2, and 3. Okay, your equation is y, 2, 1, 2 and a half, x plus 3. So what do you do? You will sub your answer. So sub x equals to negative 3. You will have 2 half, negative 3 plus 3. So what should you get here? You should get a negative 4.5. Okay, so fill in your y values accordingly. You should have a negative 4.5 this is a 3 you would have a, for 2 you have 8 here okay you would have this would be a 10.5 10.5 you would have a 1 so this is 5.5 okay you would have this as 3 you would have your answers negative 1 over here as 0 0.5 you will have your answers over here for negative 2 which is negative 2 here okay so make sure to double check if your points are exactly correct okay because that's important okay so once done you okay look at the look at the table you have here okay plot negative 3 so you see in the horizontal versions you always have 1 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 boxes, right? How do we utilize it to make sure that it's well, you know, spread out? You have how many terms here? 7, okay? So I will always start from negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, is this possible? Yes, it's possible. However, you see, you realize that it is not exactly even out. So what do I do? I'll shift, Okay. I'll have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Is it more spread out now? Yes. Okay, now next you have negative 4.5. Important to take note, 2 cm is to 1 unit, means 1 box over here is to 1 unit. However, for y value, it is 1 cm to 1 unit, which means, okay, this would be a negative 8, for instance, negative 6, negative 4. Can you see that for every 1 box, it is 2 units? Okay. So negative 2, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and then 10, 12. Okay, so what do you realize is that okay, you are now able to draw your horizontal and vertical line in the most accurate and appropriate way possible, such that you're able to fill in all the data that's given. Okay, okay, now next. What is the main thing that I always tell my students to do? Remember y axis, x axis, and zero as your labeling. Okay, then plot your points. Okay, notice how I only plot negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, are you able to plot beyond? Okay, no. So given is negative 3 to 3, right? So what will you do? You will actually plot only negative 3 to 3. You cannot plot beyond that. Okay, whereas for y axis, what happens is you will be you are allowed to plot beyond that because y they didn't give you the range. So you are able to do it for y axis. So then let's see. I'll have negative 2 here, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. I'll have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12 here. Okay, so what do you do next? Okay, plot your points. Okay, you are given negative 3 and negative 4.5. So notice if let's say this is a negative 5, you will plot the numbers in between. Okay, in between your negative 4 and negative 5. Negative 2 and negative 2, this is what you have here. Okay, negative 1 and 0 0.5. So somewhere here. Okay, then you have 0 and 3. 
you would have uh, 1 and 5.5 .5, so 1 and 5.5 .5. you would have 2 and 8 okay you would have 3 and 10.5 somewhere here okay so what can you see from this particular point okay is that you will actually form a very nice and well-defined straight line okay so you would have one here okay you draw a straight line okay using a ruler now what is important that you need to know or rather do is to do your labeling always label y equals to two uh, two and a half x plus three okay draw your line label your parts so let's say this is part a okay so this would be your answer now let's look at part two the points negative 2a and 3 b3 lie on a graph in part one so find the value of a and b so what do you do okay coordinates is always represented in x and y okay so if let's say x is negative 2 they're asking what is y so then what do you do you will find the point of x equals to negative 2 here okay so what is on the point that is net x equals to negative 2 you see you would have x negative 2 is negative 2 so therefore a will be negative 2 here okay now next i have b and 3 this tells you if this is x and y y equals to 3 so they're asking you what is x so when y equals to 3 they are looking at the number here so what is x x equals to 0 so can you see so what would my answer be for part 2 my answer would be a equals to a equals to what? Negative 2 and B equals to 0. Okay, what is the common mistake students will always make? Because this is the X and Y coordinate, right? They will always tell me, oh, okay, so my answer is uh, Y equals to negative 2 and X equals to 0. Now, this is wrong. Okay, please remember, apply your answer to the question. Okay, this is very crucial in graph. And always remember, draw your dotted lines, okay, as an indication of you're working so for instance if i'm asked to uh, ask you to find a point here what's the coordinates okay please remember to draw your dotted line as a form of working this is a this is this is actually a working mark okay so please be really crucial about that and be very mindful about it okay then that will be the end